Captain Guy. Yeah, so you just rub it like you take the shaft, you just shove it inside of your mouth and out of your mouth rigorously, back and Jesus. forth, and out of your mouth. And it's just uh, it's regular, just regular teeth brushing shit, dude. I'm telling you. I was hoping you were going to start off with the clown song. What? Oh, we're starting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what's up, dude? How you doing? What brings you here? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just saw you. You out come here. here often? And I would just was like, hey, Dan's out here. What's up, folks? It's another podcast in the woods. And uh, we're here to find out, does a podcast in the woods? Only if we're here. It, apparently, it will. And Percy Dumbleton. Man, you... I mean, we're in, we're near Percy Dumbleton right now. Full... Yeah, you... I did not <laughs> set you up uh, fully. It's, it's okay, man. This is the clip where Dylan rolls backwards in the lawn yeah. chair down the fucking ravine. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tasty one. It's only about a 300-foot drop here behind us. Yeah, it looks good. Chilling? Chilling. You got the frame? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's rocking back and forth in your chair. That's cool. It's cool. It's, it's hip. Stable. <laughs> as <laughs> long as good. my two legs match these four legs, we're good. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, we're on a bit of a cliff here. Uh, as you <laughs> can't it's our choice. see. Yeah, so it's all artistic for us. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can't tell that, but it's the, uh, the element of danger definitely adds something to a podcast, I add, find. Add most, podcast, uh, mo- most podcasters are in no real danger, and you can tell. It shows. So, so uh, yeah, you're going to get our authentic selves here. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over the list of what I brought nice. um, for us just to drag the uh, the listeners in. Um, so first off, I'm going to start off with what I did last week that was ever so popular. Um, you did something popular last week? Yeah, we're going to go on the quest of looking at this week in music history, top 200 billboard charts. Just oh, dang. blast off some songs. Oh, dang. And we don't have time for top 200. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll cut okay, it down. Okay, counting backwards I'll, from 1,000. <laughs> here are all of the songs of the world. That'll hawk, yeah, that'll, that'll get them in here, yeah. Um, apparently, Big Audio Dynamite, which I did know, and I'm just such a fucking dweeb. My brother told me after, or sorry, Jub Jub. Oh, uh, man, that cat's out of the bag. It, whoops, um, no one It's Mick, uh, what's his name, from The Clash. It's okay. his other band after, yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't realize. Ah, and then you can so hear it when you listen to the music and stuff like that. Listen to the last episode. We uh, we have Big Audio Dynamite. My such. boss Beth was just talking about uh, Big Audio Dynamite the other day, and she's jamming on the way into work because. Mm. Of it. And you're just like, why? Like, How? Why? why? So trippy. Cool. Just here's Shout out of nowhere. Out <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna start off is with uh, it's alternative rock this year in 1987, and then again this or sorry this week 1987, and then this week. 2009. So I got a couple charts. I'm only going to go over the top, top 10. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then I have a, a very trigger warning one, but it's not very, I'm going to censor it a little bit, but it's actually really cool. It's a cult you may never have heard of. Ah. It's called the Ant Hill Kids. I'm always down for a new cult. Yeah. So this one, if you haven't heard of the Ant Hill Kids. I haven't heard of the Ant Hill Kids, no. It's a spicy one, let me tell you. Yeah, it's a, it's a good read. It's a romping good read, but okay. it's also messed up. It sounds And it's already. Canadian. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> Good Canadian boys. Yeah, yeah. highlighting I'm the sure. Canadians well. Hey, look a squirrel. Whoa. See? No, I'm pointing. Oh, right there. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then lastly, uh, I've got some world records that are kind of just, you know, cool but weird that you probably also never heard of. But I some weird world world records. That's it's a bit say. of a palate cleanser records. after the Ant Hill Kids because the Ant Hill Kids is going to be a bit of it's a It's going to be a rough ride. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's a rough ride out here in the woods. So anyways, just a podcast in the woods. It does. So, Damn it, I was supposed to, we were supposed to wait and find out if it does. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Anything you want to spitball before you get d- diving into these? I up. I'm like, I meant to get up earlier and I just kind of like rolled out of bed and ran over to Dylan's house immediately. So I'm just still waking up. Got the old coffee going. I'm going to listen to Young D, tell some stories here while this plane goes overhead. <laughs> Shut it! Pumpkin spice latte. This is the second day it's out, so you know it's already fall. Bugs are attacking me and shit. No, pumpkin spice latte. That's kind of cool that it's already out. It's like clockwork. Yeah. The old PSL from, from Trim Norton's there. Yeah. That's pretty good, dude. <laughs> you, are you a PSL boy? I, I like one once in a while. I'll yeah. take it. I don't really... I don't really discriminate against any drink or another. It's It's got my spooky season on, man. And you know then, what I don't like, though, is when people shit on people for enjoying things. So I am, one of, I am on that side. I appreciate side. that. I appreciate I'm not a that. hater. I definitely wish people to just enjoy things, even if they're vanilla as hell. Go for it. Yeah, I'm a vanilla boy, man. Vanilla is a delicious flavor. Go it for is. it. Yep. Yeah. Especially when you put pumpkin on it. This one is the Hard Report, which I've never heard of them. But it's like, I guess it's like a alternative rock list. But I guess they kind of based off Billboard. Anyways, the hard report. The hard sounds report like- <laughs> sounds official. Go ahead. <laughs> it's like we've edited them ahead of time. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're saying. Totally. Yeah. 
It's like, wait, this is the top 10 porn titles of 1987? Go on. <laughs> 87? Oh, that Whoa. hair is, that's big hair. Yeah, just Bush 3, Bush oh, 4, Jesus Bush Christ. 67. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right. We don't clean it up in the woods. Uh, okay, so the number one song in 1987 with the week ending of August 22nd is Painted Moon by The Silencers. I might know it to hear it. Same. I. But I don't know. The Silencers. It's kind of a cool band name, but good for you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, number two is New Direction by Echo and the Bunnyman. I've definitely heard of that band. I don't live. Did you see what I might know the song. We're back to one of these lists where I don't know anybody on it, but I probably wouldn't know every song if yeah, I heard it. which is dope. It's yeah. hilarious. And then you get the people being like, wait, you don't know that? Yeah. It's yeah. perfect. Wait, Dan, who plays music in a different genre, doesn't know about this genre? Yeah, I mean... That's crazy. I like to think I'm a versatile music boy. You are. You're way more so than I am. I, I, I don't have the knowledge uh, breadth that you do when it comes to at least not classic rock and, and, and pop like, music. Anyway. Yeah, and then and, and even like like a lot of these, I, like, I know the band and I don't... I wouldn't be able to like start humming the song. Well, most of the music that I know, it, most of our listeners probably don't care. Like, oh yeah, it's really underground hip hop or like niche black metal or like you know some sort of like nerdy synth wave or something. I mean, y'all can come talk to me if you want about lots of niche music, but I like to I like talk to, to Dylan if you want to know about the broader. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe I don't know. This is making me second guess, but like I, this is my never ending quest to keep music and artists from the past in everyone's heart. So like, this list is from thirty seven years ago with a bunch of. Like the Beat Farmers is number the next one, number three. By uh, the song is Dark Light. How's it spelled? Beat, beat, like B E. Beat, like Beatles. Beat. Yeah. Like huh. a beat. Oh, like B E A T. Ah, uh, the Beat Farmers. Oh, I, I agreed with you, but you spelt it wrong. Right. right. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> Which like one Beatles? is it? Like the Beatles. Got it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I just like to like you know keep these people's memory alive in some. You know, sanctum of our podcast. Uh, Paul Kelly and the Messengers. That sounds like a band from the 50s. Uh, The Cure, we obviously know that. They're number five on the list. New Order, I know them. True Faith. Uh, John Cougar Mellencamp was on the alternative list this this week uh, with Paper and Fire. Good for him. U2. Ugh, overrated. Uh, you know what? If you like U2, uh, I like U2. It's if you like U2, you're probably not listening to this right now. Yeah, so. probably. So, uh, but hey, maybe but everybody are. likes what they like. I'm going to take I a bet little. Jub Jub would be the one be like, no, I like you. He doesn't. No, okay. But uh, I'm going to take just... a little bit of your PSL. Uh, knowledge and be like you know what i'm not gonna shit on somebody for liking it you know right if you yes. like you too that's good for you. pretty vanilla flavors i guess yes yeah, yeah. somebody who fair. probably drinks psls like i think they taste like mayonnaise I think. <laughs> bono's sweat is mayonnaise <laughs> good god uh it's the Spanish number nine is the jesus and the mary chain april skies the and then the last one is number 10 the Replacements. Alex Chilton is the song. So, I knew you 2 The Cure, New Order, John Cougar, Mellencamp, and I've heard of Echo and the Bunnymen. So. Sounds like my playlist right now. Damn. Yeah, it's got some bops there. But then then I switched. The, the reason why I bought, brought this list here is because it's crazy that this was 15 years ago. So I'm going to name some of the songs, which you probably obviously know, too. It's alternative rock. And it's just like, damn, this was 15 years ago. That's like literally half my life ago, and it feels like yesterday. Crazy, yeah. Uh, so this years. is week ending August 22nd, 2009, which number one song on the track list was New Divide by Linkin Park. Crazy. It feels like a forever ago, or no, not that long ago that Chester yeah, went away. It really doesn't feel very long ago. So yeah. they were still making songs. Um, Silver Sun Pickups, number two, Panic Switch, Green Day, 21 Guns. I remember when that song was everywhere, which is crazy. Yeah. That that was 15 years ago, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. Oh, yeah. Cage the Elephant, number four. Paramore, Ignorance. <sighs> Sorry, there's a bug on me. It's, on, it's dead now. I was, I was, I was ignorant. Uh, uh, <laughs> Par- Paramore, Ignorance, yet again. Paramore with, uh, with a bop. Savior by Rise Against. Um, Kings of Leon. 
you somebody i never was a fan of those guys those are the number one spots and then we got just another couple songs which is like spot 16 uprising by muse which that's a crazy song kids mgmt like yeah. that feels like forever ago um god damn forgetting i forgot about all these half half truism by the offspring that so that's when this the album 2009 was when that Rise and Fall of Raging Grace came out. That was the first Offspring concert I went to with Jub Jub and, and our friend. It was a crazy year. I fucking remember that like it was yesterday. Can't Offspring believe it was 15 Live. years ago. That would have been good. Offspring Live. Yeah, Offspring. I've seen him three times. I fucking love the Offspring. Really? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and baby. then Fireflies yeah. was just entering the list. So Owl City, remember Fireflies? Yeah. <laughs> Ten million yeah, 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 yeah. Fly- yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was everywhere, and burr, I just burr, can't. Burr, 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 burr. That that dude. That sounds like a ch- a child song, like a child. hundred percent. Like it yeah. sounds like a fucking children, like a sleepy bedtime song. Yeah, yeah. Like, a like kids go to show. Sleep. Yeah, fireflies. Totally. So, anyways, I just wanted to bring that one up because like it's like crazy. Nineteen oh one by Phoenix also on this list, which is crazy. It's a dope song. Um, yeah, that just blows my mind that that's already fifteen years ago, and I guess it's only gonna get worse as we age. It's not gonna get better. It's not gonna get more recent. <laughs> my shoes untied. Right? Well, Until you fall well, into spotted dementia, then it just shoes. goes every which way. Then everything's new again. Yeah, that's right. Hooray. We're gonna go into our big segment, the Ant Hill Kids Cult. We're gonna go into a big segment right now. Yeah. Got so, time for that? We got eons of time. <laughs> eons. Um so the Yawning ant- chasms of time. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, is there, sorry, before I jump into the next segment, is there anything you want to rem- reminisce about either 1987? I told you. I or- told you. I just don't know. I don't know. All these songs, like, I don't know. I I, I don't know what it is. Like, I'm rambling. For, for such a music Ramble. dude, yep. like, for such a music dude, I really don't pay attention to, like, radio lyrics very often. I definitely recognize all the songs on the radio, but I just never, like stopped and cared about them like oh maybe i like this song like i've always been in such other genres of music that i just never even really cared that much that's, like that's fair. classic rock i grew up with so i have like i've said it before it's kind of like a given to me i never right. really appreciated it in the sense that i want to go and find out the information about the bands and i want to like you know have a led zeppelin poster on my wall or anything like that it's just been like sort of like yeah it's something my parents like something i obviously like i think you know Obviously, there, you, rock you and roll them. is cool. I yeah. respect it and everything, but I just was never like into it, into it to the point of where I like knew the words and cared. I was busy learning like Tupac lyrics and shit like that. I preferred rap. So, it's ball. maybe next, next, maybe next week I'll pull out like what was banging on the hip hop charts and watch me also fail at that because <laughs> I don't know. I you're, listen to underground rap. What yeah. year is Dylan gonna pick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen to underground shit. <laughs> Yo, fair enough, fair enough. Just mad ignorant. Eh. That's why I have you. That's bliss, man. Uh, I'm ignorant about a lot of other stuff, like words and the dictionary. <laughs> ah, overrated. <laughs> Who needs it? Who needs the communication skills? Yeah, especially when I went to school for communication and I'd have a podcast. Who needs it? <laughs> Certainly not you. Sounds like you're killing it. Hell no. <laughs> um, okay, so you're ready for the ant hid? I'm ready for the ant hill kids. I don't know what you were going to say. <laughs> Sorry, a bug landed on my tongue. The <laughs> ant hill kids cult. There are um, quite a... We have chosen quite a buggy place here, but that's okay. Yeah, you, you, we'll take one for the team right now. So I'll let dive. some mosquitoes take a little bit of my, my life force away to their families. That's fine. That's, you live and die for the podcast. Um, so this is what goes with the saying, uh, trigger warning. Okay. We live by the cast. We, we live by, by the, the cast. cast. I thought you were going to do the trigger trigger warning. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really good at that. Yeah, he is. I can't do that. <laughs> Nobody can do that. <laughs> like like Dan can. Yeah. Um, so this is from St. Marie, Quebec, was where it was located. So it's like basically Canada, not really Canada. Yeah, close. <laughs> close it's, enough. It's inside Canada in a different country <laughs> called Quebec. <laughs> Go ahead. So uh, the guy's name is, I'm going to call him RT for the rest, but i got to obviously say it once. Roche? I guess I could call him Roche. Where? R-O-C-H. The Rock? Roche? R-O-C-H? Rock? Rock? Roche? What you decide. Roche Thero. Roche Thero. Okay, cool. Roche Thero. I like that. It sounds okay. whimsical. Uh, I'm going to call him Roche. I'm just going to call him Roche because he's actually kind of a Roche, dude. Sure. He's a wiener. Is he? Okay. Yeah, so oh, he's guy. so Roche. We don't like Roche. No. Was a man with a mission to save himself and his followers from the coming apocalypse. As a child, Thero. Fuck. Don't like give me the like last a good name. guy, actually, just trying to save people from the apocalypse. Yeah, you think. But wait, uh, Thoreau dropped out of school and started teaching himself the Old Testament. He was convinced that a war between good and evil was about to come and that this would bring about the end of the world. Thus, he converted to the Seventh-day Adventist church. Are they saying that right? Adventist? Do you know what that is? 
I have a description on it. Adventist Church. And lived by their rules. No tobacco, no unhealthy foods, no alcohol, no drugs, no fun. So an Adventist, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Adventists. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is an Advent Protestant Christian denomination, which is distinguished by its observance of Saturday, the seventh day of the week in the Christian and the Hebrew calendar, as the Sabbath. Its emphasis on the imminent second coming of Jesus Christ and its annihilationist... Fuck. Annihilationist... Annihilationist soteriology. Yes. So that's what that church believes in and stands for. Okay. Annihilationist soterology. There, I said it. Basically, the seven-day Adventist church was like really focused on the second coming and the end of the world basically yeah. bo- boil it down to that they're, they're like prophecy folk you know they're Correct. like they're like doesn't matter what's going on right now some shit is coming and we got to get ready for it and that our whole life on earth is planning for the end which that just sounds like what the hell's the point you're waiting for the advent waiting for the advent yep every christmas he convinced an entire group of people to quit their jobs and form his religious following called the Ant Hill kids named for their ant like hard work Hi-ya! he was no longer roche to the world, he was Moses. He changed his name to Moses. Cool. What a badass. So the year is 1977, and Moses and his followers formed a commune that was free of sin and stood for equality and unity. Of course, just as with every other cult, the good times would quickly come to an end, which started when the Adventists kicked them out for their weird-ass behavior. So the other church that they were all a part so the of. the actual, the established government church. Uh, sanctioned church, yep. the Adventist uh, group or whatever, they actually kicked them out for being too weird. Yep. For okay. their weird-ass behavior. Yeah, they kicked right. him out. So now Moses forbid his followers to contact their families, which is classic cult behavior. Yeah, you don't want to be talking to people who might say something that isn't what you're talk al- you aligning with what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, talk you out of this delusion, yeah. Right. And against Adventist rules, developed a drinking problem. So then he started drinking. But, he, but he's Moses, so he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, whatever. Rules for followers became stricter and stricter, up until the point where the members were restricted from speaking to each other without Moses present. So, like, the leader of the fucking cult had to be there just imagine, to have a conversation. You imagine just being so psychotically, like, wrapped up in your own power over people that you're like, no, listen, you can't converse to each other without me around to monitor what you might say. That's, uh, like, the, imagine how much fear that guy is just living in. Even if he was, wh- at, while he's in control of this ridiculous situation and somehow has these people under his thumb, he would be also just, like paranoid and freaking out and whoa I think so and so is talking about Hearing me voices. Oh, are they looking at each other like that and yeah he's just losing it like uh, you'd be like at a constant you can't be sleepover. stable huh oh my god like, what? like you're like <laughs> <laughs> hear me out that is what a cult is kind of actually like they're all sleepover. just having a big sleepover non-stop <laughs> yeah. I guess. you get Kool-Aid and stuff it's yeah, sweet it's dope dude yeah. hell yeah anyway <laughs> Fuck. Well, I was thinking, like, it's like you're, I don't know, eight years old. You're at a sleepover. It's like bedtime, eight o'clock, and you start whispering to your friends. It's like, hey, I hear you talking. Shut up. I yeah. think I, even at eight years old, I think I would not have been swayed into a cult where I'm not allowed to talk to my friend. Like, I feel like even at eight years old, I would have been like, something's up. Yeah. He's hiding something. It was some, this isn't really legit. Yet again, weak mentality. Hey, you never know. Maybe not. Maybe maybe these people were really hypnotized. Who knows? Maybe, yeah. He had a really, really shiny coin. Really persuasive. Yeah. Uh, the Ant Hill kids made their living by selling baked goods. However, apart from the baking, life in the sect was a nightmare. Moses started spying on his followers, and when some seemed not devoted enough, he would punish them. If a person wished to leave the sect, Moses would become enraged. He would hit them with belts or hammers. He oh. would suspend them from the ceiling. He would oh. pluck each and every hair on their body individually, or he would defecate on them. Oh. Um. And this is just phase one of his <laughs> madness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, You're not believing a... hard enough. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> so gross. Dude. Suspended from the ceiling like, ah, I gotta get shit on for this. I'm gonna get so shit on for this. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like, dude, that's oh, terrible. Shit. That's so f- fucked up. Oh, Jesus man. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Just so punishing your grown adult people like, no. And and I it, will pluck you for this. So you're fun. in for such a plucking tonight. But oh. the thing that blows my mind too is obviously it's one of those things that's easier said than done, and that's how it clearly happens. But when's the line that clicks into like I guess not a rational person's head, but like just even a delusional person's head to be like, yo, this is too far. Like obviously these guys like sounds like you're headed for a plucking. <laughs> talking like that. <laughs> oh God, you heard me. <laughs> okay, so back to the story. As the well-being of the seminars decreased, Moses became more and more convinced of his godly delusions it became apparent to moses that the world would end in 1979 and drove his commune into the canadian wilderness some say it did (laughs) some say it did in the after his timeline did convinced that for the same reason god would skip a chance to destroy quebec 
So he's like, ah, everywhere else is gonna is gonna get destroyed except Quebec. Uh, this is a very Quebec thing to, yeah, to yeah. think. We will be yeah. yeah the only ones to survive this. We are God's chosen. <laughs> and that was my Quebecois. Quebecois. Yeah, beautiful for the moment. So yeah, God would skip a chance to destroy Quebec for some reason. He he heard that straight from homeboy himself, I guess. Uh, 1979. God's came and like, went. you must pluck them. Yeah, <laughs> pluck Shit them all. Shit on them if they are mean to you. You are not done plucking, and you must do this in the Quebec wilderness. <laughs> Soon everyone will be bald. All of the sinners will be baldest. <laughs> and only those of virtue shall have long flowing hair from their legs. 1979 came and went, but the world did not, surprisingly. That we know of. That we know of. Moses explained this away by saying our world and God's world run on different time zones. Ah, it's not 79 in God's world yet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's like going to Australia or something. Yeah. Just catch up. Just wait for it. Yeah. However, this lacking explanation did not stop his followers from romanticizing him and proclaiming him as their absolute leader. So that was just such a half-assed excuse. Yeah, Yeah, time zones. uh, Yeah. I swear to God, there's some people (laughs) out there who just will just follow like a rotting fruit basket. It's virtuous. Oh, God, yeah. Did everybody see it move? It moved. I saw it move. It moved. How many flies are on it today? (laughs) Ah, the prophecy is real. (laughs) Fuck. Some, like, crack, like, cracker jack outside of a fucking McDonald's is just yelling, like, a prophecy about an anthill or something, and you're like, I think I'll join him. The judgment day is when the McMuffin gets canceled in the Canadian wilderness, and later the woods of Ontario, his female concubines bore Moses' 26 children. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> he'd be busy. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> His concubines be busy. Oh, oh God. These man. cult leaders are so horny. It's insane. It's oh, almost man. like that's what they're doing it for. So yeah, crazy. it's kind of weird. weird. Yeah. There's some ulterior motive. You know yeah. who loves when you bang 26 different chicks in the woods and like make them all bury your child and then like hang them up by things and pluck them. God, God yeah, loves God that. Loves God that loves shit. when you do take his, his uh, children and just, especially when you finish a bottle make of them Jack. your own. Yeah. yeah. And you get hammered while you do yeah. it for sure. Totally. It's so easy to lie to these people. He doesn't even have to be sobered. Moses, as the ultimate fucked up cult leader, would abuse his children and welfare authorities would come and take them away. However, the torture did not stop there for the Ant Hill kids. When their pappy became angry, I guess that's what they referred to him. Ew. Yeah, that's kind of gnar- gnarly. Ew. <sighs> he would take on the role of surgeon. The patient oh. would be held down fully conscious by the other followers. And Moses would go to work on them with available kitchen utensils, pliers, and a blowtorch. Okay, full-blown bad torture. Oh, Oh, God. God. Most followers lost limbs, teeth, fingers, and toes to this practice. And we're going to pause there because we have a sponsor that we need to go to. It's our sponsor, Daniel. (laughs) Uh, Dr. Sleep anesthetic. Dr. Sleep will put you right to sleep. Um, Just uh, one puff of the inhaler and you'll be asleep. Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep, Dr. Sleep. We love you, Dr. Sleep. Thank you, Dr. Sleep. We appreciate it. Use our code for 25% off. We are Thanks, back. Dr. Sleep. Wow, did I ever get a great rest from that one puff of Dr. Sleep's sleep potion. <laughs> and It's a little bit harsh. It's a little harsh, yeah. Throat, but Use our code TRMF20 to get 20% off your sleeping mattress get, or puff. Yeah, pass. or whatever you want to buy that with it. <laughs> Whole website full of shit. Just Whole website look. full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and TRMF20 is your code. That's it. For 16% off. You were saying something very horrific about this piece of shit guy. Uh, what was his name again? Uh, Ro- Moses. Roche? Oh, yeah. Excuse Roche. me. Right. Roche. Yeah. Right. He named himself fucking Moses. I'm just keeping it one name so it doesn't get confusing. Oh, no, that's fair. He's, what could be confusing about that guy? <laughs> <laughs> People lost limbs, teeth, fingers, and toes. Uh, uh, you, so, and he just used random shitty shit from his fucking kitchen. To do perform surgery. And people are like, yes, daddy, pretty much. Or sorry, pappy is what they call him, which is also disgusting. Yes. We will hold our friend down while you de whatever them so that, you know, they can be more pious. Right? right. It's all about piety. It's about God. God loves when you take limbs, fingers, teeth, whatever from his subjects when they're not, when they're just sort of misbehaving, right? Yeah, or, or, yeah, or talk to another person. Or just person. when you're just drunk. Yeah, yeah, if they talk to another person. Yeah, you can't be doing that. <laughs> oh, no, he's on a second bottle of Jack. Run. Yeah, no, that sucks. That's terrifying. Uh, okay, we continue. He forced commune members to break their own legs with sledgehammers, to shoot what? each other in the shoulders, eating their own and others' doo-doo, insects, oh. and rats. He would nail children to a tree and force other children to throw rocks at them. Oh. He would forcibly remove teeth and nails. He would burn his followers by making them sit on a lit stove. He would cut off arms and legs without warning, which that doesn't make sense to me. 
just without warning cut off somebody's arm? Just, uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, you got me. God demands your limb. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. I needed. I this needed six. This guy is six. like full blown like psychopath. Hell, hell uh, Devil. inhabitant. Yeah, yeah. Like you are a demon. You are a pit lord. He is the exact like, opposite. What a piece of shit. Holy he, shit. He made them sit naked in the cold and whip and beat them. Nothing was too cruel a punishment. Yeah. So he's essentially just like a, a villain, like a terrible yeah, total, total villain. villain. And then it's like, so then what the so the point of the cult is that this guy knows th- the end of times and where to lead you, but he was already proved wrong. I would honestly, like, even if I, I don't know, it's just like, wouldn't just exploding in a ball of fire be better than chilling with this dude? I think so. Why? What's, oh, you mean like. Like the end of days, if that's what they're so worried about. Right. Would be, taking my chances with that would be better than chilling with this guy. I wonder what someone could say. Like, listen, yes, you'll explode in a ball of fire, but it's the eternity after that you got to worry about. Like, who cares about this mortal coil? I'll take your arm. I'll take your tooth. I'll like cut you, slice you, burn you, ridicule you, shit on you, whatever. It doesn't matter. But this is just your mortal body. And I'm trying to do this for your own good, because in the after, once you're dead, you're going to either burn in a lake of fire or you're going to come with me and my flock and I will shepherd you through to the light. What does that sound like, right? That sounds like you want to Yeah, it sounds like Dan has a cult. Right? He's been practicing. <laughs> It'd be that easy, though. It's, it's that easy for these people who are like, they just want to believe, right? And now, even if they believe, like, okay, uh, this is bad. The prophecy didn't come true. It looks like he's lying. But now they have given so much of their life. They've moved away. They've moved, put a, given away all their possessions. They've maybe lost a limb or an arm or something. They've lost friends. They've, like, invested, right? Really hard, Legit. hard investment into this. So the idea that it, he's just a liar and he's just a villain and manipulating them and there is no afterlife for them and all this stuff, that's too much for them. They don't want to think about that. And so they'll literally cut off their own arm or break their own leg with a hammer to avoid the truth. What's the admission fee? Oh, it costs an arm and a leg. Boom! 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 It's waiting for that. <laughs> so, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, and fruit. if you want to get into heaven, <laughs> you know, my leg. so like, yeah, really. Yeah. And I just that that is wild. It's like, what kind of god do you want to serve, really? Mm. You, you know, like I think I would just go down to hell with the morning star, if that's the god that I have to serve. You know, it's like, okay, I just. I'm good without your help, thanks. Just, because yeah, if you're going to give kids cancer and you're going to let this guy mutilate and shit on people and do all this stuff, like, I'm not really interested. If that's the path towards heaven and God, no, thank you. Yeah. That's... I'll go burn, thanks. <laughs> or it's just like, or they should be like, wow, clearly this is the devil in disguise Elvis tried to warn us about. You're the devil in disguise. Yeah, nobody, and, yeah, no shit. And maybe we should avoid this guy. This is not the true path or whatever. And I ain't preaching. I ain't trying to fucking. But but I but mean, they don't believe that. Them. Yeah. Do they not believe that some like devil, if if devils were such a thing, or that you know a person with a sick and twisted brain? Yeah. Like they don't think that someone could just make this lie up on the spot and be fibbing them right now. That's like, right. You don't think that someone, an agent of evil, might just be fucking <laughs> telling you a lie right now? Like, it's fucked, dude. It's and crazy I, that you just went ahead with this, and you're like, no, this is the good path. Yeah, he's taking, a, he's nailing a kid to a tree, but it's for the better. Like, what? That's, yeah. Like, nothing could be more evil than nailing a child to a tree and throwing rocks and getting other kids to, you know what I mean? Like, There what? were some signs, for sure. And I just <laughs> also want signs. I just want to side note that Dan is literally risking West Nile to bring you this podcast. Yeah, I've been, wood. I've been, uh. Itching and dancing. I'm like. I've been <laughs> smacking off a bunch of these skeeters here. Like, <laughs> we in skeeter country. It ain't, it ain't fall yet. Yeah, they're taking my blood away to their families. Yeah. <laughs> Cruel and unusual punishment. Um, however. Damn okay, man. we go back into got the story. Me. Fucker got me. Fucker got right as I was talking about it, he's on me. A bold one. Okay, okay. go ahead. We gotta we get out of here. Moses, piece de resistance, came when one of his followers Trigger complained warning. Warning. <laughs> of pain. Yeah, complained of pain in her abdomen. No. Moses forced her to undress, laid her on the kitchen table, punched her in the stomach, performed an enema by cramming oh, a tube Christ. up to her butt. I'm trying to use cleaner words, but holy and filled her filled her up with olive oil. He just no, filled her up with olive oil, bro. Uh, then he cut her stomach oh, open, no. ripped out her parts of her intestines with his bare hands, and he forced other members to stitch her up. He then shoved a tube down her throat and made the other women blow air into it. Unsurprisingly, the woman died the next day. Of course, Moses, as a prophet, had the powers of resurrection. Horrible way to die. So this is a super trigger warning. Just beware. So this guy, so this Moses, he's like, oh yeah, she died. Off. My olive oil enema did not treat her wounds. Weird, that always works. Yeah, <laughs> nine times out of ten. Um, this, so then he's like, but I'm a prophet, you see? So I'm going to resurrect her from the dead. So this resurrection consisted of drilling a hole in the 
dead woman's skull and having every male pleasure themselves into the hole of the skull and the stuff that comes out. If you can, yeah. Then the woman remained dead. <laughs> no, she remained dead. Weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really work. <laughs> I, Not to I'm laugh at that. That's kind of shocking. surprised that it didn't work, but yeah. I mean, they, all the textbooks say that that will work. But. Like, ah, the olive oil didn't work. Okay, drill a hole in her head and, and yeah, well, get all the boys we, in. One yeah. thing we have to do. Yeah, it's so Holy crap. messed up. That is maybe, yeah, that's one of the more messed up things that I've ever had cults. come into my mind. Like, oh, I didn't mean to say it like that. Oh. Like, the, <laughs> like, I've heard of a lot of cults. Shit, this is crazy. Yeah, this is a very violent and sadistic cult for sure. And it was just this one wiener. It was just this one wiener with a and bunch of sad who followed. people. Like, yeah. how does somebody have the... Go along with it. No, yeah. I just don't understand how somebody... I mean, yes, they prey upon their fears. They prey upon the religiously uh, vulnerable. They prey upon people who are already suffering. But, like, I just cannot figure out how somebody convinces... Like, it's hard enough to convince a girl to give you your phone number. Her phone number yeah. out in public, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, most guys are worried about stuff like that. Like, oh, how am I going to get her number? How am I going to, you know, like, or... Or like, how am I going to get a raise out of my boss? Or like, how am I going to get, you know what I mean? Like, those are the things that people are trying to get out of other people, right? And on a normal day-to-day scale. Imagine getting so much out of someone that you're at this point out there with a bunch of full-grown adults doing this fucking sadistic torture shit. And they're all like, yes, he is the one for us. Like, how fucking convincing can you be? You could just hypnotize somebody with your words so heavily that they're like this. It's like Baldur's Gate. It's like, it's like, it's like. Like you pause and you just tell them what to do. Pause, tell them what to do. Pause, tell them what to do. Like turn base. Like yeah, I, I don't I don't even know how. Obviously, it's a psyche. Really, it's a sickness. But well, he's psychotic. Obviously, right? Correct. Like he he definitely like someone like this doesn't just believe they're doing wrong shit, right? He believes he's doing something right. I he kind of looks like I, as if I recall, I saw a couple pictures. Nuts. He looks like Hagrid. He's a big dude with a big beard. He looks like an not an everyman. He just looks like a big guy. He looks we- creepy. And like, yeah, he looks like you'd do well in the forest. Okay. So first off, that's what you got to do. Second Looks off, like you just gonna be really, I don't know, good at blackjack. What? I don't fucking know. I don't know, man. <laughs> this plane going over there watching us. Yeah. You're what talking up, shit about the hill kids? Help! <laughs> Help, circle back and save us. Yeah, We're way on. out here. Percy Dumbleton. people going by. Oh, we'll form the Percy Dumbleton cult. Allegiance, yes. Yeah. Sorry, okay. not cult. Allegiance. Yeah, see that allegiance. That's better. So you're already on the right track. Just <laughs> you can't just the straight up, up tell them it's a cult at the gates. Yeah. Then they'll know. That's true. He never said the word cult. He's like, we don't say the word cult. I will shit on you <laughs> if you say cult. Okay. Other victims of Moses consisted of two of his own children, one of which he murdered during a failed circumcision, oh and the other died God. when he when Moses left him outside in the middle of a blizzard. Oh. So he's like fucking snipping his boy and he's, he's like, like oh fuck for, I chopped the it other up one. Yeah. yeah and then the and then the other one was just waiting outside in the in a blizzard yeah this guy is a real piece of work like just an adult just a fucking a demon yeah. just he it's literally like the definition of overconfident like he just thinks like oh, I can do this it's like <laughs> I can overconfident do this. <laughs> holy crap <laughs> The God what? complex. Yeah, exactly. Like, literally, literally. Actual God yeah. complex. Like, this is this is a little bit more than an arrogance thing. This is like, to the furthest that arrogance could ever push you to the, po- the point where you feel like you can just be a surgeon on people and, yeah. like, murder them, and that's fine. Oops, whoops. None of the training, none just of the tools. It's okay. So much pain and suffering and death. Like, cool. Yeah, just man. Just for him. It took the near-death experience of Gabriel Lavella to bring to light all these horrible crimes against humanity. Gabriel had endured blow torches. Had held to her genitals, eight of her teeth taken out, a hypodermic needle breaking off in her spine. She had tried to escape, but could not live without the cult and went back. This is a harsh one. I needed the trigger warning. I don't even know about this one. This Uh, might be the roughest one we've ever had. Yeah. She had tried to escape, but could not live without the cult and went back. So she actually got out and went back. Wow. Yeah. That's how destroyed this person's mind was. Yeah. Like that's how deep the hooks are in their mind. Totally. Uh, Moses took this as a good reason to cut off one of her fingers, nail yeah, her sure. hand to a table and amputate her entire arm with a hunting knife. Of course, Gabriel did not see this as enough reason to actually leave. It took Moses amputating parts of her breasts and smashing her head in with an ax for her to actually flee and contact the authorities. It was 1989 and the Ant Hill kids were finally free. Moses was given a life sentence, Ugh. one he did not complete in 2011. So this is where it like comes, you know, a little bit of like, come some, up and some justice yeah in 2011 so he was given a life sentence in 2011 Moses cellmate walked up to the guard station handed them a knife and said that piece of shit is down on the range here's the knife I've sliced him up 
Moses was 63 years old and did not die as he had envisioned, a prophet sent by God to protect his followers. The weirdest part, even after all that Moses has done wrong, his sane followers remained loyal and slaved away to comply with his every whim. That's the end. Yeah, no, there's no escape once you, like, have somebody... Like they, they believe that they're this is like for about eternity, right? It's not this mortal coil is whatever. The people are gonna lie to us and say things and like just just trust in the have faith. They this is the leader. problem with have faith, right? Yeah. You just say have faith and then they people don't use their own minds anymore and you can tell them to do whatever you want. This George is what Michael have been, this is what people have been doing to other humans for a very, very long time. Ever since the birth of religion, people have been taking that belief and that faith and turning it into just influence and power for themselves on this mortal coil so if you don't think that this mortal coil is where you know all of your attention should go you know it's just it's just it's weird to me the fundamental just have faith and the next life will be so fantastic for you it's like what and wouldn't i any god want you to do well on this like is this just wasted time is yeah. this just a test is like, this just one weird if it test? Is a test are you not like failing it right now by just waiting for the next thing like also God would probably, if God was real, they would want you to be a good person because of being a good person, not because, or you won't get into heaven. When you're <laughs> teaching your child something, like, do you teach them that we don't hit the other kids at school because then you'll get a treat when you get home? Or do we not hit kids at school because it's wrong? Do we, do you want to like be a good person on earth because that's what's right to do? And then you'll properly get into some sort of heaven or paradise or whatever. Or do you want to just be within the rules that the church tells you, even though you want to fuck shit up and be a demon, but you're just holding your shit together so that finally when you're dead, you can get to that place you want to be. It's a reward system. And all you got to do really is want a reward system or do you want to be a good person? Yeah. What, what, what is it? You, what, what is it? You go oh, three Hail Marys or whatever the fuck? The particulars of, of the forgivenesses of each yeah. of the religions is insane. Because, the majority yeah, of those people are, are, a lot of them are fucking fuckheads. Yeah. You could just be a crook and then go ask God for your forgiveness and he gives it because the fuck that guy loves to forgive. Yeah. It's like we, he never says a word, but we're assuming he's forgiving. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's fuck cool. does he love money? That's yeah. the George Carlin thing. It's like, God, he needs a lot of money. These churches with God. <laughs> God, God loves money. He never has enough of the stuff. He's got to get more money for himself. He's all powerful, all omniscient, all, you know, he created us, the concept of everything, but he needs money. But he needs money, he yeah. He needs our printed bills. He can't, he can't just get a Lamborghini. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he has to buy it like everybody else. Designed, everything. anyway, whatever. That's hilarious. Okay, so then we go into a lighter note. Um, is there anything else you want to go on about that weird mishmash of shit? I don't like them. No, nope. there's some uh, documentaries uh, on like YouTube and stuff that would probably give a more in depth. I did the the brief version. I do want to thank uh, Cult. What was it? Cult Nation for because I got that Cult right from Nation. there. Cult Nation was the website that I got that from. <laughs> um, because yeah, yeah. yeah. I, one time I accidentally almost ended up in a crypto cult. I didn't put any money in it, so they you know, they were like, oh, uh, "Damn it, yeah. this guy's will's too strong." Yeah, I didn't lose anything. So, <laughs> but it was, but it was, yeah. Cults are weird, man. Yeah. This wasn't all online. I'd be so shitting on you and plucking your hair. That's right. I, it seemed like that. I got vibes <laughs> like that from them. So I finally I got out of there. So the lighter side is, uh, yeah, some some world records that you may or may not know about, but they're I think they're pretty interesting. Nice. Just uh, you most know, most limbs twist. removed by one call leader. <laughs> <laughs> the highest vehicle mileage uh <laughs> at 4 p.m on the that's 18th sick. of september 2013 irvin gordon in u.s that's a <sighs> such a name for this guy yeah for sure clocked up his three millionth mile mile too it's not kilometers here in canada it's mile in america in his 1966 volvo 1800 s while driving near the village of girdwood south shout of out. anchorage in alaska shout out all, to the volvo no, and that's, dude, I'd be repping the shit out of that if I was Volvo. That yeah. is literally the longest. So you, the total was 3,039,122 miles. Wow. That's incredible. That's and huge. I'm assuming it's on one engine because that doesn't count if it was a different engine. If you replace the engine, you can reset your kilometers and shit like that. He's like, serious offers only. I know what I have. So, yeah. <laughs> In this day and age, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's a fucking forerunner. Yeah. yeah 10 grand. Yeah. What do you mean, $90,000 for this Volvo? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's got 3 million kilometers on it. Yeah, but I mean... Uh, it was, You're going to get 300,000 more at least. It was mostly just kept in a garage, yeah. driven by an old lady. <gasps> it was pulled. It was pulled that. I never oh actually God. turned it on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this next one here is the fastest speed for a motorcycle ridden. Blindfolded? Terrifying. In 2003, UK's by Billy the Baxter... Of, the basis of Torify, Simon? No, uh, Billy Baxter. Is that the basis of Torify? Billy Baxter? No. no? Not he's the old one. <laughs> Reached a speed of 265.33... 
Fuck. <laughs> 200 cc. A staggering speed. <laughs> it's, it's too fast for a medium to say. Yeah. 265.33 kilometers an hour or 164.87 miles per hour while riding a 1200 cc Kawasaki Ninja motorcycle ninja. blindfolded. Oh, blindfolded. Blindfolded, yeah. He didn't want to know where he was going. That's fuck it. fucked. So 270, th- fuck, 270 kilometers an hour. The blindfold is to make sure his eyeballs didn't get sucked out. He's like, fl- yeah, into the <laughs> back of his brain or whatever, yeah. the G-forces. Yeah. That's terrifying. That is, yeah, that's... Uh, How long did he live? It doesn't say. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> right into a wall. Four milliseconds, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like he's like old Billy Baxter. What a crazy guy! You're going that fast on a motorcycle, and he's just like for sure. He's thinking like, hopefully, I can stop. Like he's definitely not like a hundred percent in control at that point. He's definitely like, Jesus, take the fucking handlebars, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, like just try not to do any little motion. Like hoping a bug doesn't come along. Like you know, like the Don't. bug that explodes his head when he hits it. <laughs> it's a ladybug, and it just like ev- like vaporizes him. Uh, Billy Baxter, 2003. Good for him. And a Kawasaki Ninja, yet again, I would use that in a marketing ad. Yeah. Kawasaki, get on it. Probably, maybe, maybe they did. Ninjas are cool. I like. I think I like Honda Shadows. I think that's my those favorite. Are, those bike. are pretty sweet. I like Shadows. Yeah. They look cool. Longest ongoing pilgrimage between December 1969 and 2013 of April, Arthur Blessett of Florida, USA, walked a total of 64,752 kilometers, or for you states people, 40,235 miles. His Google watch like rolled over and we just broke. (laughs) He has visited all seven countries, including Antarctica, having crossed 321 nations, island groups, and territories, carrying a 3.7 meter tall, 12 foot wooden cross and preaching from the Bible throughout his pilgrimage. Oh, so he's walking with a fucking huge cross on his back too? Like a... A 12-foot cross. That's that is pretty big. Huge yeah. To be walking around. He must be jacked. Dude, yeah. It reminds me of like, uh, like the, like what is it? Hetsu. In Breath of the Wild, too. The guy that gives you more in, uh, yeah, yeah. inventory space. Yeah, yeah. He's just walking around randomly yeah. across. And How's he over here now? Yeah. How's he over here now? With his little <laughs> and, stubby legs. And then he fucking, you give him Karako seeds or whatever the fuck they're called. And then he fucking does his little Moroccan dance. Korok. Korok seeds, yeah. yeah. And he does his little fucking rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And you yeah. drop the rock on their head. Oof. <laughs> you know? Most lightning strikes survived. Okay, so that's what this one is. Apparently when you get struck by lightning, your chances of getting hit again go up like a bunch. What, is your body just buzzing for 20,000 years or something? I don't know. It takes 20,000 years for it to uh, get out of you? I don't know. 20, why? 20,000? I don't know. It just sounds like a big number. It is. It's the biggest number I know. years. <laughs> it's, that's max. That is max numbers, that's man. Yeah. A single lightning strike is made up of several 100 million volts. Seven times was ex-park ranger Roy C. Sullivan, the human lightning conductor of Virginia, USA. So annoying. He's going outside like, ah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the clouds are getting daunting. It's like a blue sky, too. He's just like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go watch season two of The Office. Yeah. Yeah, again. <laughs> again, upstairs. yeah. His attraction for lightning, be- oh, his attraction for lightning began in 1942 when he lost his big toenail and was <laughs> resumed in 1969 when he lost his eyebrows. What? What? Oh, from the lightning strike. Yes. His toenail blew off from the lightning strike? I guess so. Dude, wow. And he lost his eyebrows. Fucking Millhouse. Uh, in July 1970, left shoulder seared. On the 16th of April 1972, hair set on fire. On the 7th of August 1973, this is his journal. new hair refired and legs seared. <laughs> yeah, wow, pretty dude. much it is. On the 5th of June 1976, Ankle injured. That's all he said. It's like, were you struck by lightning? No, I just rolled it. <laughs> How do you not feel? Yeah. How do you not feel a little bit like attacked by God at this point? No like, shit. You know, yeah. like, what did I do? Okay. Like, and can I win the lottery at least? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. There's a guy out here with a cult in the woods, like <laughs> mailing kids to trees, and you're going to zap this fucking mailman or whatever, yeah, like exactly. eight, seven Park times. Park Ranger. Or he has Park 26 Ranger. concubines. Give me <laughs> something. <laughs> God's Fuck. like, yeah. Mm, bzz. <laughs> like just zaps here's another, again. yeah. Here's yeah. another shock. I like I like zapping him. Yeah. In particular, oh, now that man. I've zapped him once before, I think I'll do it again. He's the target. <laughs> um, in the 25th of June 1977, chest and stomach burns, and then the last one in September 1983. Oh no, never mind. This is not lightning. In September 1983, he died by his own hand, reportedly rejected in love. So he oh, got rejected. No. Oh, man. Dude. Park Ranger Roy. Rejected and then killed himself. That's a fucking incel move right there. The, yeah. Sorry. But I mean, Sorry, that's guys. Sad. It's not cool. You're not getting the sympathy from me if you got rejected by your love and then you're like, oh, I have to kill myself. Yeah. Isn't that what happened that's to the lead brutal. singer of um, 
the Dickies, I think, or the, the original guitar player of the Dickies. That's what happened to him too. All I'm saying is, bro, there's another girl out there somewhere. Yeah. There's a girl who will be attracted to your lightning rod. Yeah, and it and does feel like it's the end of the world at the moment in time, but you just got to let it pass. And if you do what you got to do, you chill your homies and shit like that. It's like, but it's I still like, feel I have the worst sexy. luck. And they're like, well, it can't be that bad, man. He's like, I've been hit by lightning seven times. They're like, yeah. what? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, look it up in the Rip and Guinness World Records. Yeah, yeah that's me there. right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, but have you ever tried going to the Canadian wilderness Everybody's and shitting like, on people? Yeah. Ah, Everybody's backing away from him, looking at the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that, I think you probably know, did, that lightning goes up? No. It like, it, it, or maybe not up, but like, it's basically just like, you know, how you have like an arcing, yeah. uh, two wires that arc and you can see the arc go across. Yeah. That's it. It's just from the earth, the grounded earth right so up to the cloud. It it's starts like, from the ground first. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Or it's just like all at once kind of in between, but I'm pretty sure it actually goes from the ground up. I was never able to see it. I've always tried when that lightning storm we just had, mm-hmm. I got a cool picture. Well, it's as fast as lightning. So yeah. it's very hard to notice that beyond. Okay. And I'm at my last, um, fun fact from board Panda, board Panda. Thank you. Board Panda. Uh, highest shallow dive. Which this just kind of makes my skin crawl. Yeah, that sounds horrifying. In 2014, Dangerous. Darren Taylor of Colorado dived 11.56 meters or 37 feet 11 inches <sighs> into 30 centimeters no. 12 inches little pool of water. So you have to like hit the thing and go out flat, I guess, or like, like belly flat. flop. Yeah, you just have to like just do a belly flop. I Ow. Guess. <laughs> yeah, did he live? <laughs> that's he's dead. That's he like, doesn't oh, mention okay. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, but no, that's like uh, the Commonwealth Pool. That's the ten meter up there, right? Go another like meter and a half or whatever above the ten meter, and then just jump off into thirty centimeters of water. That's insane. I don't recommend it. Like, so I think like this both- is probably a bad idea. And you know what? Maybe maybe these people lived. I'm hoping did he that hit they the did. the bottom? Was he injured? We don't know. It doesn't say. Maybe maybe that's just for uh, for you to just make up your own ending. You can ponder now. You can ponder it. But like at the yeah. same time, it's just like, okay, you're going to die, but you're going to be in the Guinness World Record book. And it's just like, hmm. Hmm. Will Is my this? family be taken care of? Yeah. No. No. Oh. Will you, but will you, still. <laughs> will you be in a stupid book that's actually been proven time and time again that a lot of their shit is just bullshit? Really? Like Guinness, eh? Yeah, like it's actually been proven. There's a lot of uh, un- play and non-updated bullshit. stuff. And it's like not regulated. People you, just say they did this and well, then they put it in the book. If you're rich, you can basically buy Guinness. I, there's been like a dude that's just bought some Guinness Book World's records for a marketing tactic and it was proven that he did. Oh, so it's, 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 it's... Guinness? Yeah. So that dude just like... Just, you know, this isn't real. He's like, wait, what the fuck did you just say? Yeah. As he's diving into this 30 yeah. inch cup of water. Yeah. You'd be so pissed if you like survive that. And then like some businessmen's like, now put my name in there with, for this amount of money. Thank yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He's like, like, but what? He's fucking quadriplegic. Yeah. He did not. Like, anyways, I hope those fellows are the, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Did yeah. you see the uh, lightning storm the other day? Yeah, I went out and that's what I was talking about. Yeah, I got some cool pictures. I got a picture of my buddy looking at the lightning. It was pretty sick. I got one. It's so hard to take pictures of. I didn't even bother trying to take pictures because it was like well, sheet lightning. You got to do mostly. video. You got to do video with high frame rate. Right, right, right. Yeah. So that's what that's you got to do. Cheating, I right? did. I definitely didn't take pictures. I got a picture. I got a still. You just but I took up. video and just waited. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I learned in film school. Oh. How to take pictures of lightning. Yeah. One oh one. No, it just yeah. If you're sitting there waiting, you're like ah, ah I missed it. No, uh, dude. There's no I way. I missed it. There's yeah. no fucking. There's way. no way. Yeah. I always wonder how people do that, but yeah. So. Yeah, well, it was nice. Uh, ben and I were downtown walking around, and it was pretty. Yeah, some, I was up with some random people and just started watching the the lighting or lightning from a picnic table down by the Inner Harbor. It was really sick. It was it was, cool. it was a it was a wild one. We don't get lightning here in Victoria, BC, at all. No, so when we do, we're like excited. Yeah, you know? so if you're listening from like Ontario or something like that, today cool. feels like today feels like kind of like a day that might have a little bit of a thunder and lightning yeah it's, like, it's a little overcast it's it's warm enough out here that i can't really wear my hoodie comfortably and it's like definitely overcast so yeah. maybe we'll get a bit of lightning out here get a buzz buzz uh but yeah. before that happens okay we got two minutes to wrap this up is there anything you want to say two minute warning two minutes to wrap it up mm, i don't know i didn't really like i just woke up i didn't really have much today uh, today to talk about i just want to say good, what's man. up to everybody and thank you very much once again for supporting us and for showing up with us and cruising along i've been seeing a lot of uh new names and new faces following yeah. us i'm really really happy to see it growing definitely um, you guys are the best and we love really it really appreciate it um yeah we just i mean just to to bring the message back from the podcast i really when we started this out i just wanted to have something because i've said before dylan and uh, cam had their old podcast and when i would be driving you know half an hour and back to work I'd be, you know, oh, fuck, I got to go to work. I feel, you know, that loneliness of driving to work by yourself in the afternoon or whatever. And just throw on Dylan and Cam's podcast, The Black Sweater Perspective, and listen oh, yeah? for a while. 
And it felt like I was just hanging out with my couple of homies. And even though you, know, you can't talk or whatever, I would text them. I'd be like, oh, it's this, this is the word, blah, blah, blah. So like that for me has, has always been the goal. The reason why we do this is just to give you all something to some people to chill with when you're completely alone and you're not feeling like doing anything. You're just doing laundry, doing your dishes, driving to work, whatever it is. Maybe you're at work, but uh, we're happy to keep you company. So I know that we're uh, we're goofballs and we mess around and we say really but we love you. shit about scary cult leaders and stuff, but we love you. So uh, uh, comment or whatever on the last picture. We're going to keep saying that. Um, All the engagement helps a lot. Fire. Just comment. Fire robots again. <laughs> or so, whatever I said last time. And we have 10 seconds. 10 seconds. We've we have 10 seconds. 10 seconds left. 10 seconds. So uh, these, are my, these 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 are my friends. friends.